Brian Smith here, and welcome to the Dream Path Podcast, where I try to get inside the heads of talented creatives from all over the world. My goal is to demystify and humanize the creative process and make it accessible to everyone. Now let's jump in. Jason Moore, welcome to the Duocast, my friend. Glad to be back, man. Well, it's the last one of the year, and we're here to recap Tim Sutton's interview Mm -hmm. and our discussion about his new film, The Last Son. What did you think of that interview? Well, yeah, it was a really cool interview, Brian. I um, I, I find him to be very interesting. I watched some of his work in the past, and I really like his approach to filmmaking. I read an interview. Somebody recently described Tim's style as a contemplative style that combines the stark naturalism of documentary with the sensuous lyricism. Huh. You know, I, I, you know, it pretty much sums it up if you're just trying to kind of narrow it down. But to me, it's a lot broader than that. I think that you have to take into account Tim's influences Mm. as far as movies and filmmakers go. Yeah. He really tends to go into pretty dark places in his filmmaking. And I, uh, I read another interview with him where he talked about some of his influences and certain movies that inspired him. And he mentions Citizen Kane as being a major inspiration for getting him to start creating films. And as you know, that was an Orson Welles film. He he directed that and starred in that film. Right, right. And he also mentioned um, Taxi Driver, uh, which is, of course, if you've seen that, it's a dark, violent-themed movie. Uh, it's a Scorsese film with Robert De Niro as the star. And he plays this sort of unstable veteran who becomes his taxi driver in New York. So when you have those kinds of influences as far as movies and directors go, it's just no wonder that Tim Sutton's films uh, tap into that. Yeah, I really like his approach to focusing on dark themes and broken characters. Yes. The more broken someone is, the more interesting that film is going to be. Right. And you can take it to an extreme to the point where there's no way to connect or have empathy with that character. Right. But he doesn't really take it to the extreme uh, so that you lose that empathy. You still feel for these characters as dark and as flawed as they are. Mm -hmm. It makes sense now that you talk about Citizen Kane and Taxi Driver, and especially Taxi Driver, Mm. who uh, talk about dark, flawed characters. Robert De Niro was one of the darkest and most flawed characters in cinema history from Taxi Driver. Right. Yeah. And um, Tim... You know, Tim has his own style, though, and he certainly has blazed a path in the indie film world that has opened up doors for him with big studios now. Right. And he's working with folks like Sam Worthington, who was the antagonist star of The Last Son. Right. And Machine Gun Kelly, who really surprised me. I was not expecting Machine Gun Kelly to have a lot of gravitas on screen. That's right. Uh, and, you know, part of that for me is I'm a little biased against people who come in from other industries like music and think, oh, I can do this acting thing too. Yeah. And then you have the baggage of he's dating Megan Fox and you're like, come on, you know, (laughs) he's already this mega star in the music world and then he's dating Megan Fox and now he's a fucking movie star. Right. And, (laughs) you know, he really has charisma and screen presence. And so I get it. I understand why Tim chose Machine Gun Kelly for not only this film, but for future projects that he's worked with him on. Right. And I'm a sucker for Westerns. I don't know if I've ever told you that my favorite film in the Western genre is Clint Eastwood's Unforgiven. Yes. But whenever whenever someone asks me for a top 10 list of greatest movies of all time, I always bring up Unforgiven. And I don't see it on too many lists of other folks. I don't know why that is. Maybe I'm just uh, alone in my view of this film, or maybe it's just such an old film that it just doesn't make that many lists anymore. But I love Westerns. I love the journey of the Western genre. Mm -hmm. And I love the rugged individualism of the characters in Westerns. But I also like what's happening with Westerns these days. The modern day Westerns are starting to incorporate more diversity in their casting and more diversity in their storylines so that they're not as misogynistic and they're more, you know, woke, so to speak, but they still have that credibility Mm. of the stories from that era. Right. Tim is a director that I'm going to pay attention to in the next few years because I know he's going to be cranking out really interesting material 
that sort of writing that line between the indie films that he has cranked out over the last decade and also the more studio influenced films so he can strike that balance of getting funding from big studios or big investors but also maintaining his vision right yeah i think um i think tim's filmmaking is brilliant it was nice to see Heather Graham come back. Oh, yeah. I don't know that she ever left, so maybe that's not a fair way to put it, coming back. But no, I just don't see her in that many current TV shows or movies. And to see her in this role was really fun. I remember her from Boogie Nights. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and she's a great actress. Oh, I, I agree. My oldest daughter, who writes the show notes for these episodes, mm -hmm. was very impressed with Tim's interview. And loved the part where Tim talked about how into the role Heather got to the point where when she would talk about her character and the love for her son played by Machine Gun Kelly, mm -hmm. she actually broke down into tears with Tim on set and got that into the role and cared that much about her character. Mm -hmm. And that's a testament to how serious Heather takes this craft. Absolutely. So that's our last interview of the year. And the only thing we have coming up next is the end of the year special episode, which we've done for the last couple of years. And for folks who are new to the podcast, the end of the year episode is where Jason and I sit down and recap the top episodes of the year. So we will be launching that, I think, on the 29th of December, and we're going to be recording that soon. We're right now in the process of putting together some quotes from some of our favorite interviews. And we're not, unfortunately, going to be able to talk about every one of the interviews. It's just not enough time in the episode to do that. But we're going to try to pull out some great highlights for folks and end the year with the bang and start the year with Sundance on our mind, because at the end of January, we're going to be covering Sundance as a member of the press and hopefully booking some interviews with filmmakers and actors and producers who have films in the festival. So that's what we're going to be working on throughout the month of January and launching those episodes, hopefully beginning in early February. I am totally looking forward to this. Every Sundance season, I, I really look forward to. Always something new, always something you know inspiring to listen to. And just the people that you uh, tend to gravitate towards there in those particular industries just have a lot to teach us. So I look forward to it. The reason Sundance is so special for me and the reason I get so excited about Sundance every year is that Sundance is really where this podcast started. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to go into the origin story here. It's too long to tell on a recap. But in previous episodes, I have talked about how Sundance was pivotal to my decision to start the podcast. That's right. And how my first Actually, my second guest on the show, who was Reika Zetabshi, mm -hmm. who won the Oscar in 2019 for uh, Best Documentary Short, mm -hmm. it started at Sundance 2019, and her film played in Park City during the festival. It was not part of Sundance, but it was part of the uh, Sundance side hustles that were happening in smaller theaters in Park City. Mm -hmm. And I got a chance to see Period in the Sentence and then interview Reika about that filmmaking process. Shortly after that in Los Angeles, I got to hold her Academy Award. And that was episode two. Actually, it was episode three, but it was our second guest on the show. That's right. So Sundance really has a special place in my heart, not only because I love seeing films there in Park City. I love the online experience that they've created for folks who do not want to go to Park City or can't afford to go there. Right. But it really was an integral part of the creation of Dream Path Podcast. So whenever I go back, and especially as a member of the press, where I'm given access to filmmakers in that way, I just feel honored and privileged and super excited. I agree. Yeah, absolutely. So Jason, I want to thank you for a really special, fun year on the podcast. Hmm. I could not have done this without you. And all of these recaps that we do together are the highlights of my month. And I really enjoy processing what we've heard during these episodes and planning with you what we're going to do next and putting this all together. You really make it a fun process for me. And uh, I want to just tell you that during this holiday season, as we approach Christmas, I am grateful for you and your friendship. 
Well, I really appreciate that, Brian. And thank you so much for the opportunity to do that. And I feel the same way with you. And I just want to wish you and your family a Merry Christmas. Um, I would like to say Merry Christmas to everyone listening. Merry Christmas to my family, my wife and kids. You know, it's actually been a crazy year with a lot of ups and downs. Um, almost lost my mom last summer due to an infection. I'm happy to say that she made a good recovery and we just visited with her this last week. So nice. She's doing really well. Uh, lost a few friends this year to COVID and, uh, would really like to not have that happen anymore. Uh, you know, what I'd like to see is more people getting vaccinated and just getting back to normal, whatever that is. And I'm looking forward to more of these awesome duo casts, uh, with you, Brian. You've become a real good friend over the last couple of years, and I appreciate it. Brother, I echo those sentiments exactly. I have lost friends as well to COVID. Mm -hmm. And uh, not not to make this episode uh, too focused on the pandemic and dark themes, but I am double vaxxed and boosted and so far COVID-free, knock on wood. Yep. I kind of suspect that I'm probably going to get it. I think it's just inevitable that most of us are going to have a run-in with this virus at some point. But as long as we are vaccinated and boosted, we are setting ourselves up for the best possible chance to emerge from that without uh, getting too sick. And I want to wish all my listeners a happy holiday season, a boosted and vaxxed holiday season. Yeah. And stay tuned. Stay tuned for some fun episodes coming out of Sundance beginning in early February. We also have some surprises scheduled for January as well. Right on. And uh, I'd like to add, if everything goes right, and it may or may not, uh, we should be doing these duo casts on video starting in January. That's the hope anyway. I am really looking forward to seeing what that looks like. Yeah, me too. I don't even know if I know what you look like anymore. So <laughs> it'll be interesting to see you on camera. Uh, just a lot more bald and a lot more round. I, mean, that's all you gotta... <laughs> I was told I need to get in shape. I said, you know, fuck you. Round is a shape. <laughs> so <laughs> all right man well this is going to be interesting it's good talking to you brother good talking to you brian hey thank you for listening and i hope you enjoyed today's episode if so i have a favor to ask can you go to wherever you listen to podcasts and leave me a review your feedback is what keeps this podcast going you can also check us out on instagram twitter and facebook with the handle at dreampathpod and as always Go find your dream path.